everybody, it's Miss Jessie. Like I promised in my last video, I'm going to start our chapter book. We're going to do the chocolate touch. Again, a few pages of it in class, but I'm just going to start from the beginning to refresh everyone's memory. Chapter 1. Most of the time, John Midas was a very nice boy. Every now and then, of course, he broke a rule, such as the rule against pretending to be a tiger when his sister Mary was supposed to be getting sleep. Generally speaking, however, he behaved very well. He should have behaved better. He lived in a comfortable house surrounded by a green lawn and wide-spreading shade trees that were suitable for climbing. His mother was gentle as well as practical. His father, when he didn't have to hurry to town, spent hours telling John interesting things about baseball, beetles, bird's nests, boating, renegades, and butterflies. John went to school and liked it. His teacher, Mrs. Primsel, was fairly easy to get along with, as long as he did careful work. He had received a new shiny golden trumpet and music lessons as a going-to-school present. Mrs. Claver, the music teacher, had soon agreed to let him play small parts a few notes at a time with the school orchestra. Finally, there was Susan Buttercup. Who was in his class. Susan had soft yellow curls, round pink cheeks, blue eyes, and one of the best collections of marbles in the neighborhood. John should have been completely well behaved, but he wasn't. He had one bad fault. He was a pig about candy. Bull candy, cotton candy, licorice, all shorts, old-fashioned taffy, candied oranges, and lemon slices, cracker jacks, Jelly beans, fudge, black currant lorages, particular throats, nugget, meringue slices, acid drops, peppermint sticks, lollipops, marshmallows, and above all, chocolates. He devoured them all. When other boys and girls spent their money on mo modeled airplanes, magazines, skipping ropes, and pet lizards, John studied the candy counter. All his money went on candy. All his candy went to himself. He never shared it. John Midas was candy mad. At lunch on Saturday, Mrs. Midas noticed a couple of red spots on the end of John's nose. Look, she said to Mr. Midas, John has spots. Mr. Midas leaned forward to look at them. He gravely shook his head and clicked his tongue. John tried to look too. But it was very difficult to see the end of one's own nose without a mirror unless you happened to be an elephant with a long nose that you could bend and double. When John tried to lick at the end of his nose, first with one eye, and then with the other, and then with both together, all he could see was a pink blur. Besides, trying to look at something so close made his eyes ache. I can't see any spots, Mother, John said. Well, I can. Mr. Midas said, just because you don't see a thing doesn't mean that it isn't there. Try feeling the end of your nose with your finger. John rubbed his finger over the tip of his nose, and it did feel a bit rough. It may be the measles, Mrs. Midas said anxiously. She licked her hand on John's forehead to feel whether he was warmer than usual. But I didn't think he has a temperature, she decided. I suspect John has been eating too much candy again, Mr. Midas said. Have you been eating candy this morning, John? Some, John admitted. What? Mr. Midas asked. Well, John replied, well, I had a few cream delights Susan gave them to me. Anything else? Mr. Midas asked. A taffy crunch. John said. And what else? Mr. Midas asked, beginning to look a little cross. John's ears grew red. He knew. He wasn't supposed to eat candy before meals. Oh, um, I, um, hardly anything, he said. John, Mr. Midas said, and his son recognized that tone. It meant that John had to tell everything. It turned out that John had been around to see most of his friends that morning and had managed to get candy from nearly all of them. The least he recited was a long one. No wonder you have spots, Mr. Modest commented at last. 
I think we'd better take John to see Dr. Cranium, he said to Mrs. Midas. Dr. Cranium was a tall, thin man with a bald head and a gray mustache. He looked through his glasses at John and said, Huh. He eats a lot of candy, Dr. Midas said. He's having, uh, been eating proper meals, Mrs. Midas said. Just what I thought, Dr. Cranium said. I can tell by looking at him that he eats too much candy. The doctor shone a little electric light into John's right ear. Then he shone it onto John's left ear. Then he shone it into John's nose. He told John to open wide and say, Ah! Then he shone the light into John's mouth. Too much candy. Gracious me, he seems to be full of candy. He told John to sit down and relax. Then he picked up a small rubber hammer and gave John a light tap on the right knee, just below the joint. John's foot gave a weak kick, and John giggled. It's nothing to laugh at, Mr. Midas said. No, John, the doctor reproved him. A healthy little boy who didn't eat too much candy would kick harder than that. I I'm sorry, John said politely. But I can kick Carter if you want me to. He gave a sudden high kick, which knocked the hammer right out of Dr. Cranium's hand, and it landed into the, the rubber head and bounced across the room. John! exclaimed Mr. Midas. I'm so sorry, doctor. John, tell the doctor you're sorry for kicking his hammer. I I'm sorry, John said. I... I would recommend less candy, Dr. Cranium told Mr. and Mrs. Midas. An upset stomach can lead to all sorts of complications. On the way home, Mrs. Midas tried to explain to John what she thought the doctor meant by complications. You see, she said, if you put too much of one kind of food in your stomach and not enough of other kinds, it is bad for your whole body. Because different parts of your body need different kinds of food. Do you understand? I think so, John said. You've been eating too much sweet stuff, Mr. Midas added. There hasn't been any room for eggs, meat, milk, and bread, spinach and apples, fish and bananas, and all the other things you're supposed to have to make you grow big and strong. I like bananas, John said. Especially in thin slices covered with chocolate. They're called banana surprises. Mr. Midas looked at Mrs. Midas, and Mrs. Midas looked at Mr. Midas. They both shrugged their shoulders. Sometimes it was hard to make John understand things. At home, while Mrs. Midas was busy in the kitchen, Mr. Midas continued to reason with John. You mean you'd rather eat candy than anything else? Chocolate rather than any other candy? Mr. Midas asked. Yes, John assured him. Oh, yes. Don't you think there's something uh, such as too much of one thing? Don't you think that things are best in their place? I mean, don't you think that there's a time for spaghetti and a time for roast beef and even a time for pickled herring and garlic toast as well as time for chocolate? Or would you rather have chocolate all the time? Chocolate all the time, John replied. Chocolate's the best, that's all. Other things are just big, but chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. I think I understand, Mr. Midas broke in sharply. Very well. He took a deep breath and went on. John, he said, if you can't understand what sort of diet is really best for you, can't you at least get it into your head that you make your mother very unhappy when you eat so much candy and you don't eat anything else? The conversation always seemed to get around to the effect of John's candy eating on John's mother. John couldn't see how it could be possible to do her any harm if he ate candy. He sat silent for a moment, and then he said, May I go out and play, please, Daddy? End of chapter one. Hope you liked it. I'll bring you back chapter two tomorrow or the next day. Bye, guys.